Good day, Dr. Hagoya and classmates. By the way, I am Mary Chris Vegas, and I will be presenting to you the financial environment. So let's discuss our learning objectives for today. So we have uh, to know what is financial environment, the financial market, the IMF, SDRs, World Bank, purchase power parity, exchange rates, and balance of payments. Now, let's discuss what is financial environment. So, financial environment is an important part of the economy where the major participants are the business firms, the investors, and the market. So, the important ingredients of financial environment is the financial market. So, a financial environment is part of an economy with the major players being the firms, the investors and the market. So let's define what is firms. So the firms are the businesses that offers goods or services to consumers, while the investors, they are the individuals or the businesses that place their capital into the business for a financial returns, while the market represents the financial environment environment that make this all possible so a financial environment can exist anywhere so long as the major players exist in the economy now let's define what is financial market so financial market is broadly any marketplace where the trading of securities occurs including the stock market bond market forex market etc Financial markets are vital to the smooth operation of capitalist economies. So financial market creates securities products that provide a return for those who have excess funds. They are the ones who we call the investors or the lenders and make these funds available to those who need additional money, those who we will call the borrowers. So financial markets are made by buying, selling numerous types of financial instruments, including um, equities, uh, bonds, currencies, and derivatives. So financial markets are re really rely heavily on um, informational transparency to ensure that the market sets price are efficient and also appropriate. So now we will discuss the different types of financial markets. So we have stock markets, the over-the-counter markets, bond, money, derivatives, forex, commodities, and cryptocurrency market. So for the stock market, these are the venues where the companies list their shares and they are brought bought rather and sold by traders and investors. So stock markets are Equity markets are used by the companies to raise capital via an initial public, public offering or IPO, achieving their goals such as expansion, acquisitions, and innovation. Next, we have the over-the-counter market. So what does that mean? It means that it does not have any physical locations and trading is conducted electronically. So stocks that trade by the OTC are commonly um, smaller companies that cannot meet the exchange listing requirements of formal exchanges. So for the bond markets, uh, from the word itself, bond, this is a security in which an investor loans money for a de defined period at a pre establish interest rate. So you may think of a bond as an agreement between um, the lender and the borrower that contains the details of the loan and its payment. So bonds are issued by corporation as well as municipalities, the states, and sovereign governments to finance projects and operations. So for the money market, Money markets uh, trade in products with highly liquid short-term maturities uh, of less than one year and are characterized by a high degree of safety and a relatively low return in interest. So for the derivative market, so a derivative is a contract between two or more parties whose value is based on an agreed-upon underlying financial asset, like security or set of assets, like index. So derivatives are the secondary securities whose value is solely derived from the value of the primary security that they are linked into. So in and of itself, no, a derivative is worthless. 
rather than trading uh, stocks directly, a der derivative market trades in futures and options contracts and advanced financial products that derive their value from the underlying instrument like bonds, uh, commodities, the currencies, interest rates, market indices, and stocks. Well, the, for the forex market, forex means foreign exchange market, is the market which participants can buy, can sell, hedge, and speculate on the exchange rates between currency pairs. So the forex market is the most liquid market in the world, as cash is the most liquid of assets. So for the commodities markets, uh, commodity markets are the venues where producers and consumers meet to exchange physical commodities such as agricultural products like corn, livestock, soybeans, energy products like oil, gas, carbon credits, precious metals like gold, silver, platinum, or soft commodities such as cotton, coffee, sugar. These are known as spot commodity market or where physical goods are exchanged for money. For the cryptocurrency market, uh, because of the rise of uh, the cryptocurrencies such as Bitcoin and Ethereum, decentralized digital assets are based on blockchain technology. Today, um, thousands of cryptocurrency tokens are available and trade globally across a patchwork of independent online crypto exchanges. So that, uh, that are the types of the national markets. Again, the types of financial markets are stock markets, over-the-counter markets, bond, money, derivatives, forex, commodities, and crypto market, cryptocurrency markets. Now we move to IMF or the International Monetary Fund. So the IMF is an international organization that promotes um, global economic growth and financial stability. Uh, it encourages international trade and reduce poverty. It accomplishes this by monitoring capacity building and providing loans. So let's have a quick history of the IMF. So the IMF was originally created in 1945 as part of the Bretton Woods Agreement, which attempted to encourage international financial cooperation by introducing a system of convertible currencies at fixed exchange rates. So the dollar was redeemable for gold at $35 per ounce at the time. All right, so now we move to the IMF activities. So we have the surveillance, capacity building, and lending. So for the surveillance, they collect massive amounts of data on national economies, international trade, and the global economy in aggregate. So for the capacity building, they provide technical assistance, training, policy advice to members, member countries through its capacity building programs. So for the lending, uh, it makes loans to the countries that are experiencing economic distress to prevent or mitigate financial crisis. Now we move to SDR. So what is SDR? SDR is an international reserve asset. So SDR is not a currency, but it's the Value is based on the basket of five currencies, which are U.S. dollar, euro, Chinese renminbi, the Japanese yen, and the British pound sterling. So the value in terms of U.S. dollar is determined daily based on the spot exchange rate observed at around noon London time. So it is posted on the IMF website. Okay. Now, next. So, a currency uh, included in the S SDR basket must meet the two criteria, which is the export criterion and the freely usable criterion. So, what does that mean of the export criterion? Export criterion is a currency meets the export criterion um, if the issuing country is an IMF member or a monetary union that includes IMF members and one of the type one of the top 
five world exporters. That is the export criterion. So for the freely usable criterion, a currency meets the freely usable criterion if it's widely used in payments for international transactions and widely traded in the principal exchange markets. Okay, now we move to the World Bank. The World Bank is one of the world's largest source of funding and knowledge for developing countries. So its five institutions shares the commitment to reduce poverty, increase shared prosperity, and promote sustainable development. So the mission of the World Bank is to end extreme poverty by reducing the share of global population that lives in extreme poverty up to 3%. So their next mission is to promote shared prosperity by increasing the income of the poorest 40% of the people in every country. So they have these five institutions, namely IBRD, or the International Bank for Reconstruction and Development. They have the IDA, or the International Development Association. They have IFC, the International Finance Corporation, and the MIGA, which is the Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency. And that they have also, last but not the least, the ICSID, which is the International Settlement of Investment Dispute. And that's it for... World Bank. Now we move to what is purchasing power parity. So it is a popular metric used by macroeconomic analysis, um, analysts rather, that compares different countries' currency through a basket of goods approach. So how does purchase parity how does purchase power parity work? So an economist will use the PPP to compare the economic output of different nations against one another. It may be used to determine which country has the world's largest economy. So using the PPP exchange rates in addition to a country's gross domestic, domestic product or the GDP may help to provide a more detailed picture of a country's economic health. So the theoretical value is also helpful to traders in foreign currency and investors holding foreign stocks or bonds as it helps to predict um, fluctuations, fluctuations in an international currency and indicate weakness. So one way to understand the PPP is to study the Big Mac Index, which compares the prices of McDonald's Big Mac in 55 countries okay so now we move to exchange rate exchange rate is one of the most important determinants of a country's relative level of economic health so a higher valued currency makes a country's imports less expensive and its export more expensive in foreign markets. So exchange rates are relative and are expressed as a comparison between of the two of the currencies of two countries. That's it for exchange rate. And now we go to what is the balance of payment? The balance of payment or the BOP is the method countries use to monitor all international monetary transactions at a specific period. Usually, uh, the BOP is calculated every quarter and every calendar year. So all trades conducted by both uh, private and public sectors are accounted for in the BOP to determine how much money is going in and out of a country. If a country has received money, this is known as credit. And if a country has paid or given money, the transaction is counted as debit. So theoretically, the BOP should be zero, meaning that the assets and liabilities should balance. But in reality or in practice, this is really the case. So thus, the BOP can tell the observer if a country has a deficit or a surplus and from which part of the economy the discrepancy are stemming. And that's it for the Financial Environment Report. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great day ahead. God bless.